Hello there, and thank you for joining us for Write Your Story. This is where we absolutely love to delve into the stories of how people have rewritten their future and designed the life that they want to live. And we are particularly passionate about sharing the stories of entrepreneurial business owners, especially women, on their journey and how they've made it happen. So I am so super happy to be talking to our guest today. Kristen, I'm going to have you go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, where you're from, um, and a little bit about yourself. All right. Hi, guys. My name is Kristen Sarazis. Um, I am from Pennsylvania. I was born and raised here. I uh, have been an entrepreneur for eight years, seven and a half of those years full time. Um, I am married. I have been a crazy cat mom for the past 10 years, and I'm super excited to have our first human baby on the way. Um, me and my husband, we own our um, own boat, uh, and we love camping, and we also love to travel. We are taking our baby moon to Antigua in just a few weeks here. A thing. Like, they really <laughs> should be a thing, right? Yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay, so I know you've mentioned hubs. I know you've mentioned fur babies, right? Um are those the things that you hold nearest and dearest to your heart? Absolutely. And over the years, um, with being with my husband, it's crazy because I've never been super close to my family, but my husband has become super close to my family. <laughs> so in a way, um, we've kind of really bonded together within the last few years. Oh, that's so nice. I, look, I love when really relationships are always going to go through their ups and downs and their twists and turns and people become closer at certain times in their life. And then there's sometimes there's more distance and uh, gotta, you're going to have many reasons to have that family becoming way closer in the not too distant future. So I'm excited for you and your husband. That's so Thank cool. You. So cool. All right. So I'm going to take you out of your business for a moment and ask you, you have a day off, right? You're not going to have to check your phone, check in on your business whatsoever. What do you like to do for fun? Um, during the summer, we spend almost every single weekend on our boat. Um, we travel as much as we possibly can. During the winter, I'm not going to lie, I'm a hermit. I don't do cold weather. So typically you can find me inside curled up with my cats. Nice. I love it. Pennsylvania gets some cold weather. So I, I feel you there. I feel you there. Um, and then what are you most passionate about? What gets you really going? Um, I think within the last few years with my infertility journey, it has become a huge passion of mine to just dive into my own personal health, even more into women's health outside of my business and um, share that on social media and sharing my journey just to make sure that nobody ever feels alone because it can most definitely be a lonely journey. Yeah, it can. I, I was so impressed with one, how open you were with people publicly. Cause I know that's not an easy journey and the individuals out there that have maybe gone down a similar path or supported somebody has gone down a similar path. That can be hard. Has that changed the people, the community around you and the feedback that you're getting with how you're connecting with people? It has. It's been crazy because I feel like people don't know what to say. So they don't say anything at all, which then makes you feel even more secluded. So I've had like those differences within friendships of like, they thought I was pinpointing them, but I wasn't necessarily pinpointing them. I just wanted to bring awareness to surrounding all of it. So yeah, it's created a group um, of women that I didn't know before, but then it's also kind of, I've had those hard conversations with close people to me because they don't know how to react and they don't know what to say. Yeah, that's so true. Um, and I think, you know, just letting somebody know that they're, you're there for them is one of the key things, but I agree with you. Some people don't want to upset you. So therefore they don't say anything and then it can become awkward and weird. The other thing I observed along the way too, is, um, I think social brings our community much closer to us. Right. And the amount of people that were in solidarity with you driving through the McDonald's drive through right? Having the French fries for the good luck story around fertility. Um, that to me just made my heart sing of like how many people, even though they might not be in your backyard and know you very personally, were pulling for you and just wanted the best for you. Yeah, it's wild. I mean, I even show up to parties and people that I've never met, or maybe I met 
two, three years ago that I don't put a face to. They know my whole story. And I'm like, wait a second. I have to question myself. Like, how do you know this? And then realize I put it all out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Hey, I know putting it out there is not easy, especially on those days where you're not having good days. Right. Yeah. Um, but hopefully you found that community of support to be helpful to you along the way. All right, so let's go into the business side, the entrepreneurial side of your world. Um, I'm going to take you back in the day when you decided, hey, I want to I want to start something. I want to go into business for myself. What was happening at that time? Like what made you want to make a change? So I have to be honest, when I bought my kit, I had no intentions of selling. Um, and I was convinced to do uh, my first show. And I wasn't fully convinced until I started seeing I was making more money doing this than I was working full time. And I was just like, wait a second, this is kind of a no brainer. And then I went to my first national training and seeing that the opportunities were endless and the rest is history. I love it. What was your day job before you started your biz? Um, I was a full-time nanny during the day and I was bartending at three different bars at night. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. All right. So that begs the question, how is life different now that you're a business owner? What, what has changed for you in terms of financially lifestyle for your family? Um, I mean, it's drastic changes. I've gone from working 60, 70, 80 hours a week to maybe 20 hours a week. Um, financially, I remember the days that I literally had a notebook because we didn't use our phones for notes that of what bill I had to pay that month. So my electric didn't get shut off. So my cell phone didn't get shut off. And now we don't have to worry about what bills need to be paid. We don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, I need to have another party because I need to pay this bill. We have the ability to live and then work rather than work and then live. I love it. That's a different, I mean, when that stress is gone, you just show up in the world differently. So I'm so happy to hear that for you. Um, but let me ask you this then, if that stress is gone, how are you personally different as a result of that business success? Huge 180. Personally, I mean, I've gone from being the pessimist and the glass is half empty. And the, if I didn't have uh, bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck to seeing the brighter side of things. I mean, I don't think no matter how hard things have been, I've always been able to see there is a light at the end of the tunnel or everything happens for a reason. Um, so I'm a happier person, which in turn, my relationships are a thousand times better than what they were previously. So it's been a huge, huge difference in my life. So let's talk purpose for a moment. Um, how do you think you help people that are connected to you and your business? I think when it comes to working one-on-one -on -one with clients, I never realized getting into this that we would be helping women that are um, post-menopause, pre-menopause, postpartum, cancer patients, domestic violence, sexual violence. I mean, when you get those messages back from somebody that you've changed their life in just a short amount of time, is there's not even words for it. Uh, it, it is so true. I think that um, what you do and the space that you can provide for people, the fact that they can be comfortable enough to share those things with you, because there is a stigma and a taboo associated to trauma that's in our past when even though it, it wasn't something we created, I don't understand the shame around that, right? To allow somebody to release that shame and get help and see their relationships, even if it's just with self very differently, that is hugely powerful. That's a, a massive purpose uh, for sure. All right. So I'm going to take you to when you got started, you did say, Hey, I, when I like purchased this business, I didn't necessarily see myself selling. Um, were you apprehensive in the beginning to even take that first step? Or were you just like, Oh, this doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. I'm just going to do it anyways. Oh gosh, no, I was petrified. Um, so I have eight credits left to finish my bachelor's degree and I didn't complete college because I couldn't do my public speaking class. So the thought of ever getting in front of people to talk was absolutely not on the radar. Um, but there was a consultant that um, told me opinions don't pay your bills and people are gonna judge you no matter what you do. And it kind of, it stuck with me all eight years I've been in business. Oh my gosh. So how, all right, so- that's mind blowing. There, there are so many people that talk about public speaking to be like the thing that they, it's so hard to overcome. So what steps did you take? Like how, 
how did you even bring yourself to get up in front of the room and talk about our products? Um, I, the opinions don't pay my bills. And there was one other thing that a consultant said to me, they said, you're not walking into a church and talking to people about what they don't want to hear. Everybody that shows up to your party knows exactly what they're getting into and wants to listen to you. Um, and that was kind of just enough to push me to do it. Um, <laughs> I remember my first party, I only had three girls there. One of them being oh. a and I had laughed the whole time. And I remember her looking at me and be like, you have to take this seriously. And I was like, there's no serious to this business. Like, this isn't what I want to do. Um, and then at the end of the night, when I seen the dollars, I was like, oh, wait, this can be a real business. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. Was there a point? When was the tipping point where you're like, oh, I'm, I'm going to kick these other jobs to the curb. I'm now making some decent money. This actually is becoming something that I could see as a business. Do you remember when that time was? I do. Um, my I joined in May of 2015 and I went to my first national training August of 2016. And I came home and I gave my two weeks notice. Um, I was already making more money doing this a few nights a week than I was full time. And the national training was just the tipping point. Um, let's talk about ups and downs in terms of um, building and maintaining a business because it from afar, it looks like, oh my gosh, this is so easy and it's rolling for you. Have there been ups and downs for you and how have you navigated through that? Absolutely. So I left my job in October of 2016 and in January of 2017, I got a part-time job because I was so afraid that I wasn't, it wasn't going to work and how was I going to pay my bills? Um, and even over the years with my fertility journey, um, it hasn't always been easy to get up and do what I needed to do. But what I can say is every single one of those parties, you get there and it's fun and it's the outlet I needed on my worst days. Love it. Um, all right. So I, I think I know what you might say on this question, but I'm going to ask you anyways, what are you most excited for in the future? Uh, being able to stay home. I never pictured myself a stay at home mom. Um, and I don't necessarily, like, I plan to have childcare. So I don't necessarily plan to be a full stay at home mom, but having the ability to have that control to not have to go to a 40 hour a week job if I don't want to, um, and being able to make my own schedule. The options, right? Options. Yeah. It, for me, that's a different, um, it's a different definition of the word of freedom. The fact that you can decide, hey, I'm going to be home at this these times because I can, but then I'm also going to use childcare so that I can have other aspects in my life. I just think that's so healthy for sure. Um, what if you hadn't started this business? I wonder what you'd be doing. Have you ever thought about that? What life would look like? Um, scary. I mean, I feel like I was so broke then and so stressed and miserable just as a person that in today's economy, I, I can't even imagine where I'd be. I, I mean, I would I feel like I would still be renting. Um, I don't know, and just the opportunities that I've had that I wouldn't have ever experienced. I definitely wouldn't be the person I am today. Oh, that's powerful, that's powerful. Um, what would you say to the people out there that are like, in this type of industry and in network marketing or direct sales, you really, can't make money. There's a lot of people that don't. Um, you're clearly living a different lifestyle as a result. So how do you address that? Do you ever get asked that along your way? Absolutely. I think when it comes to failure, people are afraid to fail. Um, so I always like to go back to what if you never tried to walk? Like what if your parents told you you couldn't walk? Or what if you couldn't ride a bike? Or what if you couldn't write your name? I mean, you don't know unless you try. Yeah, you don't know unless you try. And that is so true. And I think the, the fact of the matter is the business doesn't necessarily work for everybody, but there are some people that have that first negative experience, meaning they um, maybe stood up in front of a room for the first time and they felt that level of being uncomfortable with public speaking, or they heard a series of no's, or maybe they had some naysayers in their life that were like, this isn't going to work. And, and you hear the stories out there and they quit really early on. Um, have you had moments where I, I know you talked about bringing in the other job, right. To make sure that you were making enough money. Were there any times where you're like, 
I just need to quit. I, I need to step out of this. No, I, I honestly can't say there is just because I know what my husband makes in a week and I know what I make in one party. <laughs> and I'm just like, I can't imagine going back to work for somebody else. I can't imagine being on somebody else's time. Um, and yeah, things do get hard in the business and things get scary and the economy changes, but our industry isn't ever going anywhere. So I feel like I, I would much rather push through these hard days than a 40 hour work week, hard week. Yeah. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, look, we love the fact that you've come. We know time is valuable and spending this time with us today. We always get very specific questions about our business, what we do, why we do it, how we do it. So Kristen, if you're up for it, I'm going to ask you a few of those really specific questions that relate directly to pure romance. You game? Absolutely. Okay. So we've touched on public speaking. That is a very, very common concern that people will come to us with. If you think about your own journey of getting more comfortable standing up in front of a room, are you still nervous today? Or what did, what did that progression look like for you when you were like, Ooh, I own this. I can do this. Um, I think the, I mean, the confidence came from trainings, um, showing up to every in-person thing that I could show up to, um, because I didn't have the confidence. I was clueless when it came to the sexual wellness industry before I started this. So once I knew how to answer questions and I knew I could provide those correct answers, the confidence came into play. Um, over the years, I mean, I've never missed an in-person training. I've never, it, they're crucial to your business and one lighting the fire back under your butt when things do get dull and continuing up with the most recent education. Yeah. I, I think that's important. I think, um, whether you're doing that education from afar and of course it's there, right. But being immersed in a room with other people that want to do what you're doing as well. And they, they all celebrate it. I think that's power on a different level. Um, do you still get nervous when you go into a party? Do you still have those butterflies? Um, it's rare. The only time I feel like I do is when it's a referral that I haven't met my hostess previously, but for the most part, I'm meeting most of my hostesses at a previous party. So I kind of know what I'm walking into. Um, so I don't think so. It's few and far between. Okay. All right. So let's talk about some of the perks of the business. Um, tell me about some incentives or bonuses or, or what are those other things that have come to you outside of the commission and profit you earn? Uh, trips are my biggest one. I absolutely love to travel. So I have earned 18 all expense paid trips um, in seven years. Um, Did you have a favorite? The yacht. Oh, the <laughs> the, yacht and the yacht. yacht. The intimate experience. Yeah, that I can see why that's a favorite. Yeah. Now I um, earned Thailand, and of course that was taken away. I feel like that probably would have been pretty high on the list. Um, yeah, it would have been high on my list too. I was looking forward to that trip as well. And darn COVID, COVID yeah. in the mix. We get it. We get it. <laughs> what are some of the other incentives that get you going? That keep you motivated outside of trips? Is there anything else? Um, booking blitzes, I'm super competitive. So, uh, I think just any kind of contest, um, and it's crazy cause I'm not the recognition person, but the competition is more for myself than anyone else to push myself further than what I've done before. Yeah. I think those little, those little goals along the way are really important to any business owner to say, here's the target and I'm going after it even if it's just personal competitiveness, right? Like I want to do better for me and for my customers, for sure. All right, so let me ask you this. Um, you've already said you've stepped away from all those other jobs at this point. So um, you, your primary focus is building your business. Do you think people can be successful doing what you do and still have the security of a job behind them as well? Absolutely. I have um, so many sister consultants that I'm pretty close to that work a full-time job, whether they're using utilizing this as extra cash or a hobby, um, or one of my closest consultant sisters um, has a very high stress job. Um, and this is, she always talks about her Superman. She comes home from work, she does her Superman, she gets her bags and goes to a party. And that party is relief and stress relief. And it's her fun job. Um, it's her outlet from 
the real world. Yeah, I th- I think some people can't wrap up their heads around physically what we do, meaning going into somebody's home and t- talking about sex and sexuality and then sharing products. Um, but it really is fun. And I agree with you. I think people are open to those conversations. What are some of the things that do you have surprises at parties still that that people will ask you questions or you're like, gosh, how do people not know this? Do you still have those moments of like what we do is really needed? Oh yeah. I mean, the amount of women in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s that have never had an orgasm, I think shocks me every single time I hear it. Um, but then it just gives me the reassurance that I we need more girls out there doing what we do. Yeah, we really do. I think, in, although I think information is more available and accessible, right? There's also a lot of bad information out there. And Uh, I think we are the purveyors of helping people through our experience, what customers tell us to navigate what may work for them and what might not work for them, but also giving them permission to explore those elements of their life, right? So, so important. All right. So here's, I want you to talk to somebody that might be thinking about taking the leap, creating their own business, right? Whether it's a side gig or they eventually want it to to help them step away from maybe a job they don't love, but they might have some people in their world that are the naysayers are like, you're going to fail. This isn't going to work. Can you talk directly to her for a moment? Absolutely. So what, again, again, if they, if your parents were to tell you, you could never walk, would you have tried to walk or would you have just given up? I mean, would you have not gotten on that school bus? Would you have not gotten behind the driver's seat of a car? There are so many people that are always going to be out there telling you you're going to fail because this this isn't the norm. This hasn't been the norm for the past many, many years. So people expect you to go to a nine to five and you have nothing to lose. If you're looking to get off that hamster wheel, it's worth a shot. There's nothing bad that's going to happen. If you try, if you try and it's not for you, that's okay too, but at least, you know, you tried. At least you figured it out and giving yourself the shot at it. And again, it doesn't necessarily work for everybody, but boy, it's worked for a number of people that I've decided to dig in and take that first step. Taking that first step is really super important. All right. So you're in an area where um, there's a fair amount of consultants in your backyard. So talk to me about saturation. Do you ever worry about there just not being enough territory for you to cover? Gosh, no. The amount of people that I meet on a weekly basis that have never even heard of our company is mind blowing. But at the same time, you have like, McDonald's doesn't get upset when there's another McDonald's a mile down the road. Um, You walk into the grocery store, how many brands of bread and toilet paper are there? You're your own brand and people are going to want to work with you for you, not necessarily the product. Well, I so appreciate you spending time with us today, Kristen. Thank you so much for sharing your story and, and your words of wisdom of how you've made it happen. Congratulations to you and your husband. We are overjoyed for you here at Pure Romance. And I'm thinking healthy and amazing thoughts as you enter into this next chapter of your life and seeing what you bring to the business as a mom. I can't wait to see that. Thank you so much for having me, Cheryl.